Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a big box of Baker. Janet, that is. Yes, Dame Janet Baker. Isn't it amazing? It's English. They only say Janet Baker. They took the Dame out. Ooh, gramophone will never forgive them. Janet Baker was simply one of the great singers of the 20th century, a tremendous artist, one of unassailable integrity. I mean, she began life as like a bank teller. So you know right away that you can trust her with your savings and with your with your aesthetic aesthetic assets. Let's put it that way. You know, she was such a smart and serious and sensible and dedicated artist. She's one of the very, very few who knew when to quit. She quit when she still sounded terrific, retired to the English countryside, whence she still lives. I've seen some interviews with her. She's a very serious lady. Oh, my goodness. Really, really serious. And, and rightly so, because she delivered the goods every single time. I don't think there was anyone in the universe who was more reliable as an artist than she was, um, more devoted to her craft, and who could be counted on to always be at her best. Uh, there's nothing really more to be said about it. She was more of a concert artist than an operatic singer. I think the entire circumstance, I mean, I read her autobiography, you kind of get a sense, yeah, you know, that the 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 circumstances of of the theater were, were difficult for her to put up with, you know, the compromises that sometimes you necessarily have to make. But anyway, DECA has this 21 disc box and we really need, you know, EMI did issue a Janet Baker edition, um, something of a Janet Baker edition. I don't know if it's still in print. I have to check. That may be ripe for reissue if it ain't around because it really deserves to be in print forever. You know, her, her output was not enormous because she focused her career basically on the UK. She didn't go abroad. She didn't go for international acclaim. She went for, she lived for the music and for the circumstances and conditions that allowed her to, to make the best music that she was capable of. And boy, was she capable. So this, this thing has got 21 CDs and let's take a look and see what's in here. There are a lot of excerpts from complete sets of things that she did. You know, some, some of these editions, you know, they include, they include like the complete everything. You know, if she sang, well, let's say like, you know, the Indian vocal in La Fanchula del West, they give you the whole Fanchula del West just so you can hear her go, ugwug. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, they did that with like the Jesse Norman box where you have like the whole Mahler third, even though she only sings like, you know, a few minutes of it. But let's see what we have. CD one, Dido and Aeneas. Well, she did it twice. This is the earlier recording with Anthony Lewis, which is really famous. It's got Dido, of course, is Janet Baker, and Belinda's Patricia Clark, and the sorceress is Monica Sinclair, you know, hot off of doing Catashaw and the Mikado. She was such a wonderful <clears throat> Gilbert and Sullivan alto, and she makes a wonderful sorceress too. Um, and it's really, it, it's a fantastic, classic Dido and Aeneas with a gorgeous lament at the end. It's really, it's really splendid. She does a magnificent job with it. Thurston Dart plays the harpsichord. You know, it's like the dawn of the period instrument era. So that's really cool. This is from 1961. And so there's there's that. Okay, so we've got that one. CD2, Love Arias, Aria Amoroso, by, let's see, who's in this thing? By Giordani, Caccini, Stradella, Saro, Sesti, Lotti, or Chesti, whatever his name is, Scarlatti, Caldera, Bononcini, Durante. I mean, like, Zillions of people, Pergolesi, Martini, Piccini, Paisiello. Yeah, all those people. She was a great singer in Baroque music. She really was. Because she had the, the ability to sing through the ornamentation, you know, and preserve the long line and convey the emotion, you know, that sometimes got buried beneath all the filigree and all that. So this is with Neville Mariner and other people in the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. And then you've got Francesco Cavalli from La Callisto, bits of that with Raymond Leopard, and Jean-Philippe Rameau, Hippolyte et Arissi, with Thurston Dart playing the harpsichord, and Anthony Lewis in the English Chamber Orchestra. The leader is Emmanuel Hurwitz, who spells his name correctly. Thank you. We were not related that I was aware of. We were related by, you know, 
name wise from the old days i guess it must have been anyway that's not the point the point is janet baker who's great in that stuff so you get bits of those then you've got handel's cantata la lucrezia which is wonderful the handel cantatas are so good and then you've got a whole bunch of other things with the english chamber orchestra and raber and, and and raymond leopard including including where shall i fly which is De Janeiro's mad scene from Hercules, which is one of the most incredible things Handel ever wrote. And Janet Baker goes insane quite effectively, I, mean, I must say. She's not normally a person that you think about when you think of insanity, but she, she gives it a good run for its money. And then we've got Bach, bits of the St. Matthew Passion. This is the Carl Richter recording. These are mostly the bits that she's in. I like having the opportunity to hear just the bits that she's in. I really do. And you get Erbarmadich, you know, you get the, the big aria here. And also Können, Tränen, Meinen, Wangen, and, and Bus and Roy, and oh, all the other greatest hits from the St. Matthew Passion. And then you've got bits from the B minor mass with Neville Mariner, where she sings with Margaret Marshall, soprano. Not a B minor mass that anybody was all excited about, but Janet Baker's contributions outside of context are just lovely and nice to hear. Then we've got bits of Judas Maccabeus. Here, I wish we had the whole thing. It's such a great Judas Maccabeus. It's the Macaris recording with Felicity Palmer and and, and English Chamber Orchestra. And it's it's just a great recording of Judas Maccabeus. And I, I, I just think we should get the whole thing just because everybody in it's so wonderful. And we've got a couple of Bach cantatas. We've got Ziet wir gehen hinauf gen Jerusalem and Vernukte Ru bleibt Seelenlust. Yeah, beliebte, pardon me, beliebte Seelenlust. Bleibte would be staying, beliebte is beloved. It makes a difference, right? Uh, so it's with Janet Baker, Robert Teer, John Shirley Quirk, and Neville Mariner. Oh, and there's another one, pardon me, Herr Dein Augen schen nach dem Glauben with Fisher Dieskal and Peter Pierce and Benjamin Britten conducting. So that's a class act. See, she surrounded herself with the best people. She did. I mean, you know, she was just so smart. I, I, I'm so, I have such admiration for her because of her, her sheer intelligence and, and unwillingness to compromise. I mean, you know, it's like just good for her. You go, girl. You know, she was known in, by some of my friends as Dame Granite because she was considered to be, to be, tough and insistent on what she thought was, you know, what she thought was artistically correct. Yes. Uh, Vivaldi, Gloria, Francesco Durante, The Magnificat in Four Parts. This is with David Wilcox of the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields and other people. And you get the whole Gloria, the whole Magnificat. I mean, there's no reason to have just bits and pieces of that, is there? Uh, CD7, there are like 21 of them here. Uh, bits of Handel's Ario Dante. That's with Raymond Lepard or Leopard. I think it's Leopard. You know, it, it's a a uh, it's a good performance. It's a little bit on the sluggish side compared to modern period instrument things. So it's very good, as I said, to be able to hear Janet Baker's bits, you know, taken out of context. Then you've got bits of La Clemenza di Tito and Cosi Fan Tutte. Um, her non più di Fiori is unbelievable absolutely unbelievable it's one of the greatest things she ever did and it's with colin davis and covent garden it was i remember the big mozart edition they were those colin davis mozart operas and she was part of it she's dorabella in cozy uh let's see what else we got oh haydn's shena di berenice oh that's such a great piece big concert aria it's really sort of a cantata aria thing berenice che fai um and so she's doing that and and parto parto and De per questo istante solo, the Sesto's arias from La Clemenza di Tito with Raymond Leopard and Haydn's Ariana Anaxos and a couple Mozart's, Mozart bits, Abend Empfindung and Das Welschen with, again, Raymond Leopard playing the forte piano in this case because they are keyboard pieces, which is rather nifty. Then we've got Gluck. Oh, a whole bunch of Gluck things, including Die Verite du Styx, which is totally cool. And uh, let's see, what else have we got? Oh, gee, uh, things from Paride et Elena and and La Perfide Renaud Mifui. I don't know if what's that from, oh, from Armida, pardon me. And uh, Que Faro Senza Eurydice, of course you have to have that, from Orfeo. And that's with the English Chamber Orchestra. And, you know, you know who, Raymond Leopard. Then we've got Beethoven, 
the, R, the Egmont arias, um, which are nice to have, and Ah Perfido, and some Schubert stuff, again, with Raymond Leopard playing piano and harpsichord and conducting and doing all kinds of stuff. Schubert duets with Fisher Dieskau and Gerald Moore. And um, we've got, oh, the triumph of Thusnelda here. No, Herman and Thusnelda. Thusnelda by Klopstock. <laughs> and I just remember um, P.D.Q. Bach had, you know, my bonny lass she smelleth from the triumphs of Thusnelda. It's a great name, isn't it? Thusnelda. Hmm. Schubert quartets with Ellie Ameling, Janet Baker, Peter Schreier, Fisher G. Scal, and Gerald Moore. It does not get better than that. Period. It's probably one of the greatest discs of anything ever made. And then we've got from the Hyperion Schubert edition, volume one. They've licensed it, which was awfully nice of them. Um, Schubert songs. And this was, you know, really after Baker had retired or just on the cusp. I don't remember the exact date. There she is looking very serious. Yes, of course. The round glasses really do it. Uh, let's see. CD 14, Mahler's Songs of Youth. That was also a Hyperion release with Jeffrey Parsons and the Songs of a Wayfarer, um, arranged by Colin Matthews for a piano, which is really, um, that was a fun record too. I had these, I had these recordings originally. I still have them actually. When we are getting to the overflow room and we do the M's, I think they'll probably pop up. The Songs of Youth by Mahler, his early songs, there are 16 of them. Um, you, nobody knew them. And they were hard to find. And it was really great that she and Hyperion got together to do them. And then, ah, yes. Das Lied von der Erde, the Heitink recording with James King. It's still, along with the Klemperer, one of the two real reference Das Lied von der Erde's, possibly Bruno Walter too with Hayflieger and Mildred Miller. But, but this is just a, a great Das Lied von der Erde. Amazing, fabulous, glorious playing, perfect pacing by Heitink, gorgeous singing from everybody, it's just tremendous. Then we've got Berlioz, Cleopatra, and Hermine, yeah, 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 the cantatas, with Colin Davis, and a few other goodies from, let's see, from Beatrice and Benedict, and L'Enfance du Christ. Um, so she sings all that stuff with Colin Davis, and the LSO, Foray, oh, we get Foray songs, individual ones, and then we get La Chanson d'Eve, which is gorgeous, one of the great romantic song cycles it's fabulous and then spleen and chanson de venise this was also first release on deca yeah this was another hyperion recording you know she was doing some of her more unusual repertoire for hyperion because you know at that point the major labels were tanking and they weren't interested in like leader recitals of foray songs uh and then we've got the ravel recital here um this one is was on oiseau lear the mallarme songs the chanson madacas Fabulous. I wrote my second master's thesis on that piece and a few other on Orientalism in French music. Very interesting topic. Um, Chausson's Chanson Perpetuelle, Maurice de Lage's Four Poem Hindu, it's four Hindu poems with the Melos Ensemble. This was a great record. It was on Loiseau Lear, if I'm, yes, Loiseau Lear, if I'm not mistaken. Holst Savitri. Savitri is glorious. It's Holst's opera. It's written for Tiny Chamber Ensemble, a double quartet. And a couple of flutes, I think, and 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 you know, just a tiny ensemble. Um, it's conducted by Imogene Holst, and this was on Argo. Um, there, it was the only recording of it for a million years until there was one on Hyperion a bit later. It's a beautiful work. It's about how a woman cheats death to save her husband. It's fabulous, and it's like you know half an hour long. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, Britain's Phaedra. Um, the cantata, which was written for Janet Baker, conducted by Stuart Bedford with the English Chamber Orchestra. And then we've got some Britain excerpts here, um, bits from The Rape of Lucretia and Owen Wingrave with Britain conducting. Um, that's, that's nice. These are still on CD 19 here. I'm actually rather, rather happy that uh, they took excerpts of those things because Owen Wingrave, I think, is like a major failure. Um, the Rape of Lucretia is a good work. It's problematic story-wise. It doesn't make a lot of sense um, in terms of having these choruses co commenting on this Roman story from a Christian religious perspective. It's very philosophically mixed up, but the music is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And, and, and Janet Baker's Lucretia was one of, her, one of her great roles, I think. It really was fabulous. Uh, and Werner X, The Temptation of St. Anthony. Well, there you go. 
that's this is interesting after after heirs and verses of the XVII 18th century um, with Janet Baker and the Kirkwood Quartet and strings of the Bavarian radio under Werner Eck himself. Eck, by the way, wasn't his real name. E.G.K. is an acronym. It means Ein Grosser Komponist, a great composer. It's kind of an in-joke. because he, Anyway, he was an interesting composer. He wrote a series of variations on a Caribbean theme. The theme is Yellow Bird. You know, yellow bird high up in banana tree. I would love for that to get released somewhere. It's in the NDR radio archives. My 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 dear friend Zeron Meyer Eller, who you've met in this channel, my friend in Germany and I came across it when we were asked to do some archival research to put together uh, the NDR's initial CD release program. And uh, oh my goodness, some of the goodies that they had. Ah, wonderful. CD 20, A Child of Our Time, all of it with Jesse Norman, Janet Baker, Richard Kazili, John Shirley Quirk, the BBC Symphony Orchestra, Colin Davis, originally on Phillips. It's fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful. It's such a beautiful work, moving work. And CD 21, the last, the later, the 1977, Dido and Aeneas with Janet Baker, Norma Burroughs, Felicity Lott, Anna Russell's, Anna, Re Anna Russell, Anna Russell, no, Anna Reynolds, Felicity Palmer, Alfreda Hodgson, Peter Pears, Robert Teer, everybody in the world, all under the direction of Stuart Bedford with the Adelberg Festival Strings. And that, my friends, is the Janet Baker edition. And as a result, she's smiling. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? So yeah, I mean, this is just great stuff. I mean, the songs are tremendous. Her her chanson dev, the foray, is, is to die for. Uh, really, really beautiful stuff. And a wonderful tribute to a phenomenal singer. So get it while it's hot. And the best thing, like I said, is that her, she contributes to larger works that aren't so hot, like Owen Wingrave. We get to hear just her, and we don't have to deal with the rest of it, which is a smart move on Decca's part. And Decca has not been all that reliable when it came to smart moves lately, have they? Um, they haven't been. Anyway, keep on listening. Did I say that? Who cares? Take care, friends. All the best.